Hello, the world. How's everybody doing? Oh, wait. That didn't go up like it was supposed to. Uh, why isn't that localhost? Oh, okay. There we go. It's supposed to be bigger. I've got all the fonts set up for streaming, for stream size, so that hopefully it's easier to read. A uh, little accessibility stuff going on there. Um, can't figure out what my glasses are or not. Now I look like I know what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> I got nothing. Um, cool, yeah, so this evening, uh, plan is to work a little bit more on the snake case renamer, which is somewhere, where did I put it? Oh, so I was using VS Code um, to try using it as a new browser, or as a new, uh, what do they call them, editor, IDE. And I like it a fair amount, um, but something I, there wasn't a good way that I found to do something that PyCharm can do, which is if you're on a test file, run tests like hit Control R or whatever the hot, the the cord is for R to um, to run the tests, and then in PyCharm, if you move over to another file, the file that you're actually testing, and work on it. You can hit the same Control Shift R or whichever, and it runs the test suite again. Um, there was it looked like there was a way to do that in uh, VS Code, but then it turned out not to work the way that I thought it was, or thought the way that I thought it was working. It kept going back to the actual test code or just running the file that I was on, and I, I wanted it to run the test file instead. Um, there's almost certainly a way to do that. Uh, I spent some time on it and didn't find it super fast. So I, I don't know, I spent maybe half an hour trying to figure it out um, and didn't get it. So I'm popping back over to PyCharm. Um, the, one of the reasons I stuck with VS Code is because of the, uh, the high contrast that this thing that you're seeing now. Um, I, I'm not sure about the accessibility of the, of the black on white or white on black instead of black on white. Um, it's certainly easier on my eyes. Uh, and I think it's, I mean, it's like designed as high contrast and on Visual Studio Code, it's literally, I think it's literally, well, here, we can check it actually. Um, I think it is literally straight black on straight white. Somewhere I've got an app that will tell me on my desktop what the, uh, um, what the bunch of a thing. Oops, you can see my number of followers. Why is it so? Mac is doing this thing where it takes a long time. So that file is in there right now. I'm like 80% sure it's in there. I'm like 70% sure it's in there. Go somewhere else. Come back in. Scroll down. Did I not take a screenshot? That would be silly. I must not have taken a screenshot. Well, if two show up, then we'll know what's happening. Um, I really thought I did this. Yeah, I see it down here in the corner, so it took a screenshot that time, definitely. So now let's see how long it takes to show up. There it goes, now it's showing up. Okay, whatever. I don't remember if that's the first one I shot or whatnot. But so I'm pretty sure if we sample this, I don't remember Photoshop. I? No. Wait, is that it? Yeah, K 100%. So this is pure black. And then K 0%. So that's pure white. So it's it's as much contrast as you can get with a black on a black and white spectrum. Um So that's one of the reasons I, so I I think that's going to be accessible enough. Um I hope so. Uh, I need to do a little more research on that. The that monitor is too dark, so it's hard to tell. Um, but I really like the look of it too. It feels like Tron to me. Um, like the that I really like the kick of that. So when I clicked on it and I hit it, I was like, "Ooh, I want to stick with this for a while." And then went to PyCharm, and PyCharm also has a high contrast, but like it's not straight black back here, um, which makes it less of a thing. Um, I'm going to see if I can actually edit down the uh, um, the theme. I'm sure, like, 
I expect the theme's editable, or I can at least make a new theme uh, and make it black. If depending on your how bright your monitor is, you'll be able to tell that like this is black and then this is a darker gray. But to get the punch of the contrast, to get the max contrast, I want to make that all the way black to give the most um, the most punch to it. Um, and I'll play around with the fonts, maybe make them a little bit brighter too. Um, but anyways, so that's all about all that stuff. Uh, this is the wrong project. Let's go to snake case names. So the the project that I'm working on is, and it, it's taken a, a couple different hops um, to to get the pieces in place to do it. Uh, but oops, hang on one second. I want to load a server up, but you don't need to see all of them. Um, So I've got this music archive from YouTube that's free music that you can play uh, on their platform without them copyright striking you. So it's, I don't know if it's explicitly copyright free or if they just got the licenses for it or whatever. Um, but I'm, I'm making, I've got another project where I'm making assemblies of random videos from NASA to put behind these songs to then upload them so that like the songs are all on YouTube and I can make playlists on YouTube instead of just having them on my machine. Um, but one of the things I want to do is I want to format these names in the way that I would format them if I was like setting this stuff up, which is either completely snake case, which is all lowercase with um, underscores instead of spaces, or I may actually do one which is keeping the capital letters. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, just because that, that'll make it slightly easier to push stuff up uh, in terms of getting the names proper. Um, but so that's that's the goal, is to go through all of these and basically snake case the names. Um, I, I went through one version. I was going to see if I could do it in Bash. So I went through a Bash version and did it, and I got basically the first set of them done. Um, but there's some secondary functionality that I want to have in terms of... Uh, like I want to look at each file. I basically, I want to look at the list to start with, grab the list and then make a list of what all the names will be. And then verify that that list isn't going to collide with itself. Cause what we don't want to have happen is two files that are slightly different in the way that they're formatted, both end up going into the same place and one overriding the other. And it's kind of a race condition. Maybe I don't really know if that's a race condition or not, but it's a, it's a, a collision of names that we don't want to have. And like, I just started thinking about how you'd try and do that in bash. And I was like, I'm, I'm out on that. I did, I did the exercise that I wanted to do in bash and got far enough. And I was like, okay, it's, it's time to roll back into Python. Um, but with Python, I want to make it a command line tool. And so I spun around for a while trying to figure out how to get it into a command line tool. I've got that solved. So I keep solving all these chunks of problems. And now I'm in the thing where it's like, oh, I, I can actually now write the code to go do the transformations, right? To, to change the names. So that's where we are with that. Um, and uh, we'll just get moving. So uh, I've got a whole bunch of name tests that I set up. Um, so all these commented out are the ones that we'll want to do. Um, I've already done a couple. Um, so there's a, a basic one. Uh, oh yeah, actually, let me do this. File path string. I want to switch this up. So this is it. So the the format for all of these. I want to keep this the the format of the test structure the same. So we basically have our input file path string. We have our target that we're expecting to get, and then actual is goes and calls the the process that does it passing it the, the first one and then expects to get the second one. And that's where we do our tests. So that's the pattern for all these. It's just going to be test, 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 test. Um, I thought a little bit about possibly going through and making like one, like, cause it would be really like, there's a whole lot of duplication here, right? So each, these two lines are duplicated across, but I kind of don't care. Um, I, I could go through and make a single function and pass these as a list basically. Um, like a list with two items in it. Um, and I did that on the other one, but like this one, I'm like, ah, you know what? It's just, it's fine. Um, 
Also, I don't know how to test. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe we should do that. Um, I'm not sure what the best way to do that is. Well, I mean, I guess you could just, because these are just modules, right? Or just a uh, bunch of things. Um, but would you test? Well, you could make a test helper, I guess, would be the way to do it. I don't know what a good way to do that is. Like, what a... Because I want... If a test fails... Like, I don't want a single test with all of the things in there and it to fail, right? Because I... Well, I guess it would show you... Hmm. I want to think through this for a minute. Um... Okay, it shows you what the thing is that fails. It tells you, so here it tells you the test name, but that's very rarely what I look at. I look at this. And I guess in the actual test, you could pass, because you can pass a name, right? So if this, which one failed? Test four, so if you pass, Self test method. I usually just skim over all this stuff. Oh yeah, somehow PyCharm has started doing, I think, PyTest on top of this, as well as unit test. I don't really know what's happening. Um, I did a, I tried to install, or I, I installed some software yesterday with uh, Homebrew, and it installed fifty thousand things, including different versions of Python. Um, I think it even took a version of Python away from my machine, which is not what I was expecting. So everything's been freaked out since then. Um, Spent a couple hours this morning trying to clean up. Uh, but you can pass stuff here, right? Doesn't that show up somewhere? Yeah, okay, so you could pass the thing. Eh, whatever. Um, I do have a bunch of them and it would be nice to just add them. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's make, let's flip it out to a list. Um, so dev test file strings v2, whatever. Whoops. Oh yeah, VS Code also doesn't add, like PyCharm adds some extra stuff quickly for you in terms of autocomplete. Um, that is nice. Uh, so, file tests, there's gonna be a list. And then for the list, I guess it's as easy. So here's where I need to make a decision, right? Do you do a list of lists or do you do a list of dictionaries? I don't see, I don't foresee adding any other stuff to it. So I'm just gonna do, like with a dictionary, like you could keep adding things to it if you needed to pass stuff. Like if I wanted to pass in something for these names, I could make that happen. Um, but I don't foresee that. So I'm just gonna stick with the list. I'm not gonna try and, you know, uh, as I say, prematurely optimize. Um, so I'm gonna start with the top one here. Yeah, this will be nicer to do anyways. So I'm gonna start with the top one. And then for file test in file tests. Uh, expected is file test zero. Uh, oh, um, file path string is actually file path zero, file test zero. Expected is file test one. Actual equals, oh yeah, this is cool. So I can just do these two lines. So I'm just loading up the same thing. Uh, this should actually pass right now, I think. Oh, except I, s yeah, okay. Oh, it's also nice because I go back and forth on this. PyCharm, uh, when you do the Control Shift R, 
if you're clicked into a single test, it runs just that single test. Sometimes that catches me because I think I'm running the full test file and I don't quite pay attention to that. Um, but one test failed. Yeah, so I, didn't, I need to fix this. I want to get back to green. There we go, green. Um, yeah, I'm still, I still don't know where this pie test stuff came in. Um, there's all this, somewhere there's the way that you can get to the run, the configuration, edit configurations. Hang on, let me look at this, pie test. Or pie. Mm, be nice if it showed the whole thing. Yeah, I'm at Python 3.9 now, apparently. Working directory. Name, allow power all on, stores project file. See, I don't know how. Oh, there you go. Oh, look at that. That's pretty slick. If you mouse over it, it shows you the thing. Oh, yeah. See, it's in PyTest. Is PyTest what Python is now? PyCharm supports PyTest. Following features are available, dedicated test runner, all that jazz, cool. By default, the suggested default test runner is unit test. So to utilize PyTest, you need to make it the default test runner first. Preferences tools, Python integration tools. Okay, hang on, I actually wanna switch this because I'm, I'm running unit test. And it's, I think it's running both. So let's fix this. Settings, preferences, tools, Python integration tool, integrated tools, default test runner. I don't know how that switched. Maybe I gotta start it again. I don't know what's going on. That's still PyTest. Wait, now it's not even showing. Yeah, this is still PyTest. Oh, come on. Quit. Let's start again. I wonder if unit test got f no unit test couldn't have gotten freaked out, right? That's the default inside Python. So that would be really disturbing if that got messed up. I have a bunch of windows open. Uh, it's a video assembler. We don't need video assembler. That's Scratchpad. This is snake case names. All right, run. Still by test. I mean, it's not awful. I'm about to just stick with it, but why didn't it switch? Testing, default test runner, unit test. Okay, whatever. I'll mess with that later. Test running, test, like, that's really the key trick. Um, so, cool. All right, whatever. Uh, so let's make this fail just so we can make sure that it really is testing. So we're going to put something else in there. There's a failure. Yep. So that's bad. Now let's fix it. Just make sure it's fail. Make sure it's passing. Cool. Test passed. All right. So we can get rid of this one. Uh, here we Cut this down.
I should have... I used to have a clipboard thing where you could do... Um, all right, let's do this again. I just want to see one more failure. And one more pass. And now I kind of trust the thing that's working. So I used to have the thing where you could make multiple copies. Like I could cut twice and then paste twice and have it, you know, do its thing. But uh, I don't have that anymore. I had a good one and then it busted somehow and I didn't like the new one, so uh, I stopped using it. There's like a dozen of them out there, I know, but... Um, the other thing that freaks me out a little bit about those is, and I need to, I need to look into this too, but like if your password manager doesn't somehow clear that password, like if it captures passwords, that can be problematic. Um, like not in general, but if for example, you're on screen stream and you go back and you paste something and you paste one too many and it pa pa does a password, like that's not good. I mean, I've. I've MFA'd all the things, but still. Don't wanna don't wanna leak that. Okay, so there's those tests. Sweet. Okay. Now this one's gonna be a little trickier. Um Spaces after names. Oh wait, so I do want one extra. I do want one more test. I want to keep this one alive. Let me go one more and get the. Nope. I don't know what all that was doing. Um. Oh, here you go. I do want to keep one more alive because I want to be able to test without affecting the existing ones. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So that's all good, that's all good. So what I want to be able to do, I like staying one step away from green. Uh, it's a thing that I learned from a woman named Sandy Metz. And the like if I just added this new file name set to this file name set, right? I have to start, I would be, I would start working on, let's actually open the file that we're gonna work on. How about that? I would start working on the update name function or method. I can't remember what you, how you call these. Um, oh, we don't need that. Um, but I would be affecting all those other tests at the same time. So even though it's in the same test, I would still consider each one of those things in the loop an independent test, right? Because it's start, it's it's giving an expected, it's giving an actual, and it's going, right? So even though it's under the same method, independent tests. <laughs> it's making a Christmas tree over here. Um, so what I've got is this this second method here that I can use to point my new work at. And so the way that I do this is, um, so I'm gonna start with opening this up and I'm just gonna run it against the existing thing, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna fail. If that passed, I would just move those things in because it would be passing on the same on the same test. That would be great. They're not, right? So here's the expected, here's the actual. So it's it's got this extra underscore here. Um, which that's a weird place to put a space between a space and the dot of the file name, but it could happen. So we're gonna we're gonna find it and uh, make it go away. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this to another method, this update name dev. And now I've got a completely separate workspace, so I can do all this other stuff without affecting the existing tests. So this test is gonna fail, but if I run these independently, they all pass. So. No matter what work I do on this dev, I'm not going to affect those other tests. And I really like that as an approach. Um, and then the other thing that that lets me do is I like getting to green as fast as possible. Another Sandy Metz thing. So 
if this is the expected return value, I'm just going to paste that in to start with. Just like straight hard code it. And now my test is going to pass. And if I ran all of them, all my tests pass. So cool. So now I'm set. So now I can actually go do my work. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push all this stuff down into it. And then I'm going to try and figure out. And so this is where it gets a little bit weird in term, and just in terms of the dev stuff, right? In terms of like how, what's the best way to kind of look at this stuff. And so all I'm going to do though is, again, I want to stay one step away from green so I can just uncomment, I can just uncomment that at any time, get back to green because that's my hard code. But now I'm going to go look at it again. I'm going to see the same thing, which is this right here. So now I need to figure out how to fix that. I've already got all this code in here. And so now... How do we want to actually fix it? Now is when we actually do some dev work, right? Um, these are all over. I don't know why all this color is showing up in here. Um, it is mildly distracting, but I'm not a big fan of background colors on stuff. Like I don't mind, I don't mind changing what the font color or whatever, but like changing the background out very rarely works for me. Um, cursor being the exception, but uh, and line you're on being an exception, I guess. Um, Whatever, that's neither here nor there. So we're just taking the string and we're lowercasing it. We're taking out all the spaces and turn them, or mushing all, sorry, this is taking all the spaces out in front of it, at the front of the string. So what I'm thinking we do is, there's a couple different ways you could do it. Um, I could look for spaces around dots or I could split, take out the front and the back, and then reassemble. But I think I'm just going to look for any spaces around dots. Because I haven't made the conversion to underscores yet. The conversion to underscores happens here. So I'm going to do that last. But if we come here, new name. I don't know why I did that. That was weird. Substitute a regular expression, and then I'm only going to do this one way, even though I, th I think we're going to need to have it two ways. But again, I'm only going to focus on the test on the I'm going to do the minimum possible to make the thing that I need to have happen happen because I don't want to I, I, I don't know enough about the future to try and do other stuff yet. I got a pretty good idea, but I may I may discover stuff as I'm doing this that that leads me down um, a, a different solution. So what I think I'm going to do here, right, is if, so it should be slash s plus, so any number of spaces with a dot behind it. And I want to make that go away. Oh, but I needed the dot to show up. So we do that to new name. And then, so here's the other cool thing I love, right? I can just hit control R, not control shift R, and it's going to run whatever the last test I was had so still failing I may have exploded something else I don't know what's going on regular expression Did I bomb the right regular expression somehow oh some yeah I did right there sub let's try that let's try again but see, I don't have to jump back over to the test file to test it. I can keep testing it right here, which I love. Okay, so there. So, so now I'm passing. And now what I can do is I can take... Actually, I should just leave this in here because I'm going to need to do it. So I'm going to return update value file path file path. So all I'm doing with this is anything that comes... So the the original test is pointing to this method. And then the new test is pointing to the new method. All I'm doing with this is taking that original test. When stuff hits the, the original method, it just immediately forwards to the new method and then returns and it does the actual work. And so that lets me test to see if the new code that I did works with the old test. And if it does, we'll just copy the contents back down into here and then we'll be, we'll be good. Um, so let's see if it works. Did not work. So what happened? Update name. Oh, 
It's gotta be self. Now I'll try it. Passed. See? Sweet. And so now, we know that that works. So I'm just gonna copy all that stuff into here. I comment this back out. And then the last thing, just real quick, we're gonna test that all the tests pass with the new stuff going in the right place. It does, cool. And so this is where it gets a little tricky in terms of the maintenance of this. Cause what I would do, oh, well, I guess I could just duplicate this. Cause now I've got to like, now I've got to put this in here. Right, so that's a little bit, a little bit of a thing. But what I can do do, 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 comma, try comma. I can actually just do this, right? Here, let's just copy the whole thing. Copy, 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 pasty, pasty, pasty. So now I gotta do is fill in these with the new test. And that makes it easier for me to copy the stuff up because I'll just copy whatever the list is and move it up. Um, I have to run this like this. Does it work? Probably works, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's nothing. Yeah, so that means I can put in a couple of these and be ready for the next tests. Uh, sweet. And then if I wasn't gonna keep working on this, I would delete this now and i'm still not sure about the right like the the best way to jump through that stuff it feels like it's one more step than i'd like to have but it, it's worth it for me for having the the capability of, of being able to split the new work from the old work um the other way that i was thinking about doing it was you could either way you've got to change things in a couple places and I wish there was a better way to do it than that. I haven't come up with that yet. There may not be one. Cause like, you've got to change the name of the test. You got to change the name of the method. So, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyways, let's go to the next one. Uh, actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to commit some stuff. I don't know what this is. Oh. Deleted test, so it deleted pi test. Still doing it, whatever. Oh, I just moved a bunch of stuff around, okay. Next set of tests running. Sweet, okay, so next one up. that that so again I'm back to the to the original one just run it oh that, that passed okay that's cool that one worked already good next I'm not gonna commit every one of these, um, which is probably, you know, bad, but. When I pay for it, we'll, you can just call me. Okay, yeah, this this may be funky. Oh, no, actually, yeah, so I think this is gonna bust because I'm only, the, when I first did it, I only addressed spaces in front of dots, which is how I wanted to do it. like. I was pretty sure this was coming up. Actually, I knew this was coming up, but I still didn't want to, I didn't want to put in code until the test, until I was working on the thing that I was going to test. I didn't say that right at all. I didn't want to put in code until the code was addressing a failing test. And so this, I believe will fail. Service says, fails, right? So now we can do our thing. Oh, you know what we could do? Oh, even better. Of this this is good hey well tdd yeah absolutely i'm uh i've become a very big 
converted fan into it. Um, the it's not it's not how I grew up, but the more that I do it, and the more that I try and exercise those muscles, the more that I like it, and the more that I kind of get used to it and know how to do it a little bit more, also pleasurable. Because um, for the first while, and like some of the stuff I've been doing has been like file system stuff and network stuff, and I didn't have a good way to like separate those things out yet. And that was tricky because I couldn't figure out how to test it, but I'm starting to get there. Anyways, how are you doing? Have a good night. Assuming it's night wherever you are. Um, but cool. Okay, so check this out. We can take this and we can use our this module and we can just put in a straight call that we can comment out, but we can leave it here to the live one. That way we can always leave that one sitting in new name equals blah, 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 blah for right now. Um, but we can always leave this one sitting at pointing at dev and it's just gonna forward itself while we've got that stuff commented. Oh yeah, UI dev, uh, 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 like I, so I, started to do a little bit of that at one point um and it's not not my favorite um now that was years ago when i was in that world i'm not really in that world anymore um that was when like selenium was first around or just barely around and like even before it was around um so yeah i have no idea what that looks like now but i can't imagine that that's a lot of fun um with everything about it basically uh do you, uh, you do front end stuff or UI and oh yeah, so there's UI and I'm sorry, I'm thinking web automatically, but like app dev, right? I mean, we're like web apps, apps, whatever, but like binaries that install on phones and devices. Um, that's gotta be just a whole nother world. I don't even know how you do that. Yeah, you just have people look at it. I actually don't know what you do. Selenium bad. <laughs> Uh, do all the things sweet the uh do you do like os development too as web development or like all the things all the things or like all the things or like all the things i don't know um because like i i've only ever done like web stuff and some python stuff i like i don't really know where i fit into all this mess but everything web space okay cool sweet the uh what's your like what's your stack look like these days so I, I i haven't been in the web stuff in a while um i hear tremendous numbers of people talking about react um i'm like messing around with a personal site on django um just because i've been as i'm getting back into doing coding stuff i've been working on python django python so i was like that seems like a natural fit um but like I keep hearing stuff about React that uh, is all over the place, um, and so it's got me, it's got my interest peaked. But I want to step through stuff first and get get some Django stuff going to start with before I jump. Um, but I, but I also know there's like religious wars about frameworks and all that other stuff. So um, Node, okay, right? Oh, Node and React, okay, gotcha. Rubber Ducky Twitch Bot. I don't know snowpack. <laughs> By the way, what is a rubber ducky Twitch bot? The faster front end builder. Oh, I don't know this. Dev server starts in 50 milliseconds or less. Okay, that's super fast. Look at that. I don't know that one at all. Do a shameless do a shameless plug. Do a do a what's the opposite of shameless? Like a prideful plug. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. 
Okay, so rubber duck debugging. That's what you're talking about, right? That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the use what works. It's about the chat when I was... Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. So, do you stream then too? It sounds like. Um, I don't know about you, but so I've found just talking to, you know, the theoretical audience that's out there is a little bit like rubber duck debugging because it's like I'm having to explain stuff that's in my head out loud. And I mean, the number of times that I've said something is like, oh, I should do that, but I won't. I was like, wait, no, do that. Or what if you do this? Like it, it's definitely, it's definitely flipped around. So um, it's, I'm like, one of the reasons I'm doing it all the time now is because I really like, it's helping me learn and grow as a, as a coder, right? Um, and it's also just fun, but it's neat. And I'm making stuff again. It's awesome. A really good interviewing practice. I never thought about that. Right. May we only ever have to interview once in our lives, even though that's a really broad ask. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I hadn't thought about that at all. I like it. Yeah, I hope I never have to interview again. Like, I'm at a pretty good gig right now, so, like, hopefully it stays good. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, always always keep the thing warm. I forget there's a analogy in there somewhere. I forget what it is. Um, keep the irons in the fire. Keep Yeah, irons in the fire, maybe. Um, but yeah, so snowpack... Modern development front end. So is it, is this like a framework? Or, I mean, is this what, like a build system or you actually would like launch a site and snowpack would be underneath it? It would be what serves it or what is it? I'm a little confused. Out of the box support for TypeScript. Like, where, how'd you deploy it, I guess, is the question I'm really trying to get to. Search your application unbundled. Okay. We'll file changes, snowpack. Okay, All right, that's cool. Hot module replacement. All right, that sounds awesome. Bundle builds. Oh, library support. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Just had to keep reading a little bit. Tooling support. Okay. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. Yeah, like all this tooling and all this stuff is still, it's so new. Like I just, like I said, I haven't been in this game in so long. So like I come back in and I'm just like, I, I have a little bit more I've got a tremendous amount of sympathy now for people who are just trying to get started in the game. Because I've got a bunch of experience around general stuff, right? So, like, I can get hooks into this stuff. But, like, just walking back into this, like, wave of thing. It's like, like, I don't even know where to start. Like, I'm just going to start doing stuff, right? But, like, that's not exactly. I can do that because I've got the privilege of the history, right? Webpack with Superlimit. Okay, cool. Essentially build a stack site. Nice. Yeah, I, I just like... So one of the things I'm actually trying to figure out how to do, because I'm just now getting into this, I'm kind of like getting back into it. I'm trying to take a whole bunch of notes to come up with a like package of, okay, if, if you were just getting into this, here's one way that you can do this do these specific things. Cause like, that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest tricks, right? Is looking around for stuff and being like, I don't know what I should be looking at. And even when you're looking at it, you like, so there's a hundred tutorials for Django and a bunch of them are crap. And like the official one is not good. Like I, I spent hours on the official one and it didn't work for me. And like, I kind of know what I'm doing. I can't imagine trying to be a new person going in for that. So it's like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how to help that basically. Um, but it's, it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Google the error message. Right. Um, and it's funny cause I actually, I've, I've been kicking around the idea of making it. Well, so I'm actually, 
I will make a Django tutorial at some point. I don't know how close I am to that, even though I'm just learning it myself. But what I've been doing is taking notes across all the stuff that sucks about the tutorials that I've been doing. Um, but one of the things I was thinking that would be an interesting approach is the the main approach that I've seen all these things are like, here, edit this file, edit this file, edit this file, edit this file, and hit go, and you'll see something. Well, of course, if you made a typo on any one of those files, it explodes. So the way that I was thinking about doing it is you'd actually start with a fail. So like just spin up the thing and try to go to a page and it's not there. But then you read the error message and you say, OK, it's now. And then so as part of the process of doing the tutorial, every step of the way, you would hit an error message and read the error message. So it makes them less scary and show, starts trying to teach you how to read an error message because that's not something I've seen many things do. Um, and I think that would be helpful for everybody. Yeah, so I think it's like I'm I'm still spinning the idea in my head a little bit, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give that a shot. Um, because I think that's I think I think that's a skill that we aren't taught. Um you just have to you hear it enough from other people and eventually you start recognizing it yourself. Um but like I've been kind of like sitting there, um and I didn't I didn't totally start doing this as soon as I should have. Um but like I started Oh my God. So here's where I'm starting to make it. Um, and like, I got a ton of stuff. But like somewhere down here, where's it go? Yeah, uh, error examples. So I started capturing like whenever I'm doing anything, if I hit an error, I copy it down. And I'm like, okay, what? Here's the error I saw, here's what happened. Here's the error I saw, here's what happened. So I'm gonna look at reproducing these as part of the thing, but also like walking into it in terms of like, look, I'm gonna, we're going to look at this error message. I'm going to show you how I got there, and then we're going to look at it again, and we're going to put the two things together so we can kind of see what's going on. I, I don't know. I'm still kicking around some ideas with that, but that's that's kind of where my head's at. Um, so we'll see how it goes. At some point, uh, I will do that. Uh, it may take me until I retire, but um, I figure it's going to be something I do on stream a little bit. Uh, that should be cool. should be neat. Um, but right now, let's see about this failing test. Uh, which I completely... Oh, new name, SDF. So we need to put an equal sign there. Uh, and then... Oh, we should do this so I can see. Da -da -da. I gotta fix chat so I can see it for real. Uh, ba -ba -ba. All right, so... Did this switch again? Oh, here we go. Yeah, so now we're seeing the spaces behind the names. So what we should be able to do, yeah, this is cool, I like this. Ooh, I really like this approach. So now I'm gonna get to green just as fast as possible so that I can work in green, which is just gonna be hard code it and run it. And I still goofed, aha, see? That's why we try and get to green first. What did I do? Oh, I copied the wrong thing. See? Wrong target. Try that. Still failed. That was unexpected. Expected actual. Oh, because I'm... There we go. See? Now I'm still failing. Now I don't know why I'm failing. Okay, now I don't know why my test isn't working. So I'm going to dev, I'm going to dev, it's expected. Oh, expected is nothing. How's expected nothing? Expected, file test one. Well, this was a smart idea to put all these things in one. So file test. File test. Uh, I confused. Expected actual file test one. We're going to dev, test file test strings. This is space two more. Space two more, yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh. I originally had all these out as individual tests that were really easy to see, and now I didn't do that. 
and I don't know what happened. First, second, message none. Uh, yes, because I don't really know how to use tuples. Um, uh, how would you do that? I actually don't know. Like, legit, don't know. I, I, I have very little experience with type Python. Um, tuple? Eh, W3 schools. All right, whatever. I know it gets knocked a lot, but whatever. Tuple. Oh, you do it in watch your things. And then just call it that way. Ah, nice. Uh I tell you what, I'm going to, I'll look at that another time because I don't know what's happening here. And this is something that theoretically I know. Uh, file test, what is going on? Okay, so let's hard code this. So expected should be this. So let's just hard code that and see if we can make that happen. Is that going to work? Okay, so that passed. So that's where the problem is. What is going on? So f this is file tests. For file test and file tests, which would be this. And it's getting this one. No, it's getting this one. Zero and one. Whoa. I'm at a legit loss. Let me just make sure it's nothing to do with these. And now it passed. What? Oh, I know what happened. It was these. So I hard coded a return value. And so the the expected for this was nothing. And then it got a hard coded return value, which didn't match the expected value. OK. I knew it was something. Because like <laughs> dictionaries and lists work. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> that was me earlier. It's like, ooh, let me put a couple of these things in just to prep. Wah wah. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's been like that all week. Uh, it's been like that all week. I, I have a Stack Overflow question out there right now where I copied and pasted something literally out of a tutorial and it didn't work. And nobody's answered it yet, so I think it is legit freaked out. But... um. It's still just like, what is going on this week? All right, I'm going to put this down here. I'm going to put this up here so we can see it. We're going to drop this in. We're going to do this so we can actually run again and see our error. Because this will be our target. But we can mess with this one without messing with the rest of them. And I think what I can do is if I flip this one and I put a dot with any number of spaces after it, there's a plus sign, there it is. And run that. There's our pass. And then what we do is we come here and we make sure that when we pass it to all the other tests, everything passes. Does everything pass? It do. Wait, that's just one test. See? That's just one test. That's just one test. How? Why is it only testing one test now? Oh, come on, Bajarm. Don't do this to me. If I come down here. Oh. 
Run test. Does that work? It's only one test. There's more than one test. There's this one and there's this one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh my God. Whoops. Nope. They're named the same thing. Wonder how long that's been going on. That would have been nice if it had warned me. There's two tests. That was almost bad. That could have lasted for a while. I, I'm kind of regretting having moved stuff into these lists and not just and not just basically copied and pasted everyone now. I thought this was going to be a better way to do it. Um, I'm not as happy with it now. Uh, Yeah, I'm actually going to go back. Like, it's I was I was iffy on it. I wanted to try it. Now it, it's just it's more it it makes them more fragile than it should be. F test file 1 whatever. Self go. So it's just this. But with these. Alright, this is gonna be boring for a minute. Maybe it's all been boring, but. Alright, let's make sure that runs. Yep. Alright, so let's get a few of these going. Yeah, it's a bunch of duplication, but like, I'm okay with it for the test. Absolutely okay with it for the test. Uh, that other way just did not work for me. So, we revert. Just make sure these are running. Oh, they're gonna explode down here because I didn't, uh, because those aren't happy. Let's try it again. Oh, it's the one test. Let's try it again. Sweet. Cut. File four. Paste you. Five. Probably should have tested these as I went, but I wasn't thinking about it. Get rid of that. Oop, get rid of that. Oop, get rid of that. That, and then I think this one works. But the good news is it's going to be in its own test in a second. I mean, it already was, but it's going to be in its really own test now. Yeah, I like this. This is a better feel. I've done that a couple times where I tried that loop stuff. And it's like, this seems like it should be better unless, you know, less duplication and whatever, but it just doesn't. It, you're mess Effectively, you're messing with a working test is every time. Six. Burn those for a minute. There we go. Test passing. Sweet. All right. So let's. So that was passing. That was forwarding to dev. So now we can copy dev in. Comment that back out. Run the suite. Uh, six. Oh, everything was talking to normal. Anyways, yep, there we go. Sweet. Okay, so we're green. We're gonna commit that. Uh, got 
spaces before dots and went back to individual tests. About that. Yes. Yeah, I feel like I've just been like banging weirdly recently. Um, I mean, it's fine. Like you just, it, stuff has been off in a weird way, but you can't, I mean, like just, just happens sometimes. So that just happens sometimes. See if I can figure out how to copy and paste. So this is gonna be seven, I think. Seven. Whoops. That was six. Wait a minute, what's going on? Cut. No. Oh. Six, seven, you're seven. You're eight. You're here. You're there, you're here, you're here. Whoops. What I should do is write a script to just build all the tests. Like, you could loop over that pretty, that's not a bad idea. If I thought of that earlier, I would have done that. Uh, I did not think about that earlier. Yeah, you know the feel, right. The, and it's weird, cause it's like I haven't done much, I haven't, I both haven't made much progress and I've made a bunch of progress, right? So I went back and forth a couple times, but like I didn't know where I was gonna end up until I went through that process. So I don't, it's easy to feel like that's wasted time, but I, I've, I'm trying to train myself to not think that. Um, Cause it's, you can't get to the end until you go through all the parts before. Uh, all right, so let's run this. Did that pass? Is that already working? Sweet, okay, we don't have to do anything for that one. Nice. I like it when they already work. That's cool. This has a question mark in it, so we'll see if that gets taken care of. Does that work? It does. Make sure that's test nine and it's doing its own thing. There we go. Full test suite runs. Full test suite runs. Sweet. Yeah, I'm kind of not surprised that a bunch of these work. Um, I just want to make sure that they all work is the trick, right? Because uh, these are all the various things that I saw that threw me in terms of like, that seems like that might be a problem. PyCharm's hotkeys sometimes are weird. That jumping lines thing, I don't know what I hit, but I hit it frequently. And it does that jump and it always freaks me out. Your 10, does 10 work? No, 10 does not work. We had something we do not like. Es. Oh, uh, mm, now I got a decision to make. So right now it's flipping this single quote or apostrophe into a space, but then it gets converted to an underscore. I could take it out and just mush the thing together, which I kind of, which is originally what I was thinking I would do. Um. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so that's good. This is a good target. Um, so let's point back at dev, which should fail the same way because it still has the same code in there. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, and I don't need to hard code this one because it's I'm basically already there. Um, but I think we want to put up front. Yeah, so we can just do this up front. We can look for any Oh, well, we're gonna have to put that in double quotes. Any single quote and just make it go away. What's that gonna do? That is gonna fail. 
Why'd that fail? Uh, that doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm going to dev. Oh, I did it in the wrong place. Uh oh, pretend I didn't do that. Let's actually do it in dev. That is sometimes a confusion thing that happens. Okay, so now let's try it. There's our pass. Sweet. Uh, I'm just going to cheat at this point because that was only the one minor change. So we're just going to throw this all up there without doing the full back and forth. If it freaks out, then we'll, we'll, we'll jump back. Um, again, I like I like staying the one undo away. And this is that's could still kind of be one undo. Um, but that's passing. So we're in good shape. Uh, here we go. Numbers, numbers, numbers. I kind of think this is going to work. But I may have just jinxed myself. Whoa, especially if I do that. Don't do that. Okay, now it's using unit test again instead of PyTest. And now it's using PyTest. And unit test. Ah, my installation got freaked out. I did some, I did an update of Homebrew. Well, I tried to install software, I installed software with Homebrew and it just did everything it thought it wanted to do ever. Um, and my Python has been just completely, or not completely, it hasn't been screwed, but it's been really flaky ever since then. Um, let's clean up a little bit. Seems like a good time to clean up. I don't know why. But so PyCharm started defaulting to PyTest for who knows why, except there it just ran unit test instead. And there's unit test. But if I go up here, it's PyTest. As long as it each say they each say eleven tests and they're all green, I'm not overly concerned. I guess. How many more of these do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, got a bunch. Uh, let's do this. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna go in text expander, temporary. Paste that. Let's just make it a little easier to get them. Because we can just do this and have that pop in. Which makes it a little easier to deal with. Oh, needs to be in double quotes. Got it. It's like those two lines. Let's see how that goes. Fail. What'd we do? Oh yeah, see it's back to unit test again. Which is harder to see. Um, oh, okay, so this is doing, it's doing the fix for Now we're going to do this one in dev. Um, so this is legit. We're going to take this into dev. And then just to make sure we're golden, we're going to hard code this for a second. Just to make sure we're green and we've got a passing, we can get to a passing test. So if we run that, we should be green. Yep, we're green. Okay, cool. And now we go look and see what we need to do. And what it's doing is that the parentheses is coming out of the front and it's leaving a space. Or sorry, the parentheses is getting moved into an underscore and that's happening at the front of the file. So. And I'm removing spaces at the front of the file. Yeah, this could be, this will be ugly, but it'll be fine. Um.
Yeah, okay, let's just fix the one that we know we need to fix. Let's not overthink it. So, whoa, don't do that. So here, I'm the last thing, I'm gonna go start of the string, any number of underscores. And that should fix that, yep. All right, it's the same thing. We're gonna pass it up to it. Pass all the test up to it, sorry, do that. Does all work, sweet. So we can drop this back in. You know, you could, hmm. I'm trying to figure out if it would make it faster to just have a switch in there, but that's kind of what you're doing. I may experiment with that. I'm afraid, yeah, so. Because while you're developing, all right, I'm going to try something weird. Um, this may be a really bad idea, but I want to see what happens. Um, so update name. And then what we can what we can do is do like a red green switch or blue green, whatever. I can't remember what the things are. Blue. Green. Yeah, because this way you wouldn't have to copy stuff. And you could just do a forward here. That would either go to blue or to green. And you could just switch you could just switch this. I feel like I'm getting convoluted, but I wanna carry it out and see what happens. So none of this stuff is gonna be in the mix for a minute. That's fine. You all take a break, a break, a break, break, whatever. So you're either going to blue or green, and we've got blue here and we've got green here. <laughs> you know what I should have done is I should have had passing tests for all this stuff before I did that. Did I, were they passing? I don't remember. Um, Nope. Oh, well, one of them doesn't have one of them doesn't point to dev. Okay, so that's fine. So I think that's the problem with the other one, which and that's one of the things that I run into with this is sometimes I forget. Yeah, see, sometimes I forget to take them off of dev. But what? Yeah. So what you can do. Instead of going back and forth and doing the copy and paste, this should be 12. All right, let's commit this. Getting ready for blue, green, module, test, whatever. So right now, update name is pointed to blue. Let's get rid of this. Let's do this for real and see what happens. And then we don't need this because we're gonna, our switches Yeah, we don't need the switch, because the switch is happening in the module above. Okay, I kind of like this, I think. So let's put a new test. 
It's going to be 13. And we'll start just by pointing it to, you know, to the exist, to the, to the main one. Just see what happens, because this might pass. That passed. Okay, that was easy. This is 14. Now here is one that I'm wondering about, because this has a, I forget what you call them, ligature? What do you call the things up above accent mark. Oh, interesting. It's Hmm. See, so yeah, do I want to figure out how to deal with accent marks? Um, doesn't help. Where's the useful comment? Small caveat slash W won't match combined code points. So A and the combining acute accent won't be matched even though it prints as under case A. You may want to normalize to NFC first. Thanks for sharing. I'll have something extra to learn. Can you implement the fix mentioned by Arjun? Your Solution, thanks. Unless you really come across the situation that describes that my solution still works. With accented characters. I'm also not a need to create an expert with details exactly, but if you want to normalize, like you suggest, and check the other answers to this question. You may also want to normalize. You yeah, may also want to use normalize. Normalize. How to convert all these escape characters into the respective characters. How do I convert that into a standard A? Assuming you have loaded the, your Unicode and variable my Unicode. But I don't want... So f find all words plus. So if you just do re Unicode, what does that do? Reg X one one demo. What does this do? Test string. Great new matches the uh, first group. Full match, group one. Set reg X options. ASCII Unicode, match full Unicode. Oh, okay, that's cool, okay. So let's get that out of there. So let's put in That character. Oh, look at that. That's two characters. But it matches it. That's hot. Now, can it lowercase it? Oh, yeah. See, that's actually where it's getting funky. Um, Python lowercase. Unicode. Unicode how to find lower case. For example, ASCII American Unicode. Uh, ba -ba. Yeah, how do I do it?
I still don't totally get Unicode and encodings and all that stuff. Like it's just kind of all over the place. Uh, it didn't, I don't think. So I've got, so this has a accent mark above it. This A does, and I called to lower and it split it into this A with um, an underscore after it. That could be that I've got something set up weird, <clears throat> but I'm just doing like, it's the first thing I call. Um, oh, but actually, you know what? It's worth, actually, where should I do this? Uh, case hold, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Still did it. But let me see if something else is going on, because it's quite possible. No, because I would have taken it out, I don't think. But let me let me throw it to a different thing for just a split second and make sure there's not something weird going on. Um Well, I'm in the wrong file. Let's try the right file. Uh, string equals blah. Whoa, it didn't pick it up. Picked it up there. Code runner didn't pick it up. Or maybe I just can't see it. code runner picked it up it's not aware so that's a bad thing to do yeah I don't think so I'd like to see if I can keep and I actually don't know if it's proper to keep an accent mark of a capital A over lowercase a um, that may be you know not the right way to do that um, let me go where's my scratch pad uh, So string equals that. Okay, it's shown up there. And then print. I just want to get, I don't want to see anything else. String lower affecting it. I want to make sure it's really this. Oh, see that worked. Okay, so it is doing it. So something else is freaking it out. Okay. Yeah, no, it's... I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make an attempt to see if I can get it right, but I'm not gonna like rewrite Python for that, right? But this but this tells me something else I'm doing is messing with it. Um So I am gonna spend I will spend just a little bit of time see if I can figure that out. Um So this is going into update name. So update name currently is pointed to blue. So this one's gonna go to green, and I can play with green and see what's up with it. If I'm doing this right. Hey, look, we went back to uh, unit test for some weird reason. Okay, so there's that. I'm okay with it passing, or I'm okay with it failing right now. Um, we just do that and run it. What do we get back? Okay, yeah, so it's passing. So it passes properly the A when you just do case fold. What's the difference between case fold and lower case? I don't know case fold. Case hold. Aggressive. I like it. 
It's used for caseless matching, ignoring cases when compared. For example, German lowercase letter B is equivalent to SS. However, since B is already a lowercase, the lower B is nothing to it. Case holocron is SS. Oh, okay, okay. So it really slams stuff. I gotcha. Um, you know what? I'm gonna... Let's see what lower does. I may back off and do lower. Because I don't mind if it's... Um, whoops, we're in the wrong file. I don't mind... Yeah, okay, so that kept it. So I'll do that just in case there's weird stuff. Like, if that's already lowercase, and it's, that's cool. Like, that'll make it be fine. I don't need it to flip over to the SS. Um, uh, actually, oh, I can do that. I can do this. Um, okay, so let's see. If I just add one regex in there, is it just passing it through regex what does it? Nope. That's still there. I bet it's this one right here. Yep. But wait, why? Because that's only affecting non-word characters. And it's... Oh, 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 okay. Okay. The Unicode character is actually two... Or the Unicode A is actually two characters. There's an A, and then there's the accent mark. And so what just happened is the the slash W let the A pass, but the accent mark is not a word character, so it nuked it and turned it to an underscore. I'll bet that's what's happening. Uh, where's that Unicode stuff? Who had the Unicode? Somebody had the Unicode. Probably you right here. Yeah, let's see what this does. Service says negative. Still did it. Crap. Hmm. Why didn't that do it? Because we put in, where's that regex thing? That was what we put in, and it found it. So it's already lowercase. Oh, so let's put in the lowercase version. Here. In that regex thing. See, it still lets the A pass. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, where'd my code go? I should find my code first. Hmm, did not like a U there. See that lets it go. Where were they putting the U? Oh, see, they didn't put a U there. That's what this one did, though, right? Here. I wonder if that's. Where's Python expression thing? Python. Pythex. There we go. Uh, test string slash W plus multi line. Uh, they don't have verbose in here or Unicode in here. Match captures match doesn't let me do anything. In our case, multi line what does dot all do. No idea verbose. Nope. Uh, okay, that doesn't work. So, sub match plus 
So it's matching it. All right, hang on. Let's play. Let's play over here. Oh, yeah, let's maybe import regular expressions. What do you say? Seems like a good idea. Yeah, it's splitting it. Um, now, okay, hang on. Let's try this. Anything that's not a word that way. Okay, I think I see what's happening. Why? I don't understand why the Oh, start word. Sorry. No, that was this was that was a bad idea. Anything that's not a word. How do you tell it global? You just do G? Nope. Okay. What's I gotta do? Yeah, okay, so it's still doing it. Um Oh, yeah. Take it easy. Have a good one. Uh, I will absolutely play with a rubber ducky bot. Let me know when it's up. Uh, I'm totally into that. That sounds awesome. Have a good one. We'll see you around. So why is that not working? It says it should work. What version of Python was this? So I don't want to... Make sure I understand under the question. Can you find all I say words after the van character? However, it doesn't account for accents. If one of the letters are in string one, it will save the hashtag up until the letter before it. So for example, that and that. I need to be able to count for all letters in German French sir. How can you go about doing this? Use our regular special unit code flag. Unit code flag won't make the range use match non ASCII characters, no. If you tell Red Hag say to you, it will take the little range, not human interpreted A to Z. Some Okay. So what will it do? See the answers below. <laughs> Try the following. So find all. When was this? 2013. Okay. All match combined code points. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, here it is. Small caveat. So it won't match combined code points. So A and that combining accent won't be matched. You know that prints is A. You might want to normalize first. How do I convert all the escape characters and the respective characters? Like if there's a Unicode A, and how do you convert into a standard A? Assume you've loaded your Unicode into a variable called my Unicode string, normalizing A into A is simple. But I don't want to. I don't want to change it. I want to match it. Which it says this should do. Uh, Python match combined Unicode regex. Unicode strings. See also the regex module. This is maybe not going to help me too much. Um,
Here we go. Max Mitch, Unicode, and ASCII. First of the following R Python 2 with all sorts of UTA encoding. You in front of it, does that work? Unlikely. No, did not. Crap, come on. Um, there's gotta be a way to do this. Oh, any not so. Simple actually, you matches all alphanumeric characters, not all the characters in this string. Decode. Get the RE Unicode argument to RE compile is not necessary since the pattern itself does not contain any Unicode characters. A can be encoded as two points. In the situation, dot applied to A will match the A without the will fail to match the code point. Unicode is a combining mark. Unicode point does not combine mark will fail to by any number of combining marks. Fortunately, A can also be encoded as a single Unicode with a grave accent. How to match Unifo, Unicode, whatever. Matching a single graphene, whether it's encoded as a single point or multiple points using is using Perl. Uh, unfortunately, Python is not one of theirs. Simply use dash x. You can consider dash x as the universe as the universe version of that. The oh, always catches the line break characters, whereas the dot does not match line break characters. So is this gonna work? No. Everything here except for Python. To match a specific Unicode point. Python match RE combined Unicode. Unicode strings and 8-bit strings cannot be mixed. That is, you can match Unicode with byte and vice versa. Okay. These are all docs. Here we go. This sounds like a thing. There's no to regex. If I understand correctly, assess version of the new package is standard the same. Note that this makes X more or less equivalent of dot, not of that, just it. For example, it supports X. Okay, let's just try that. Uh, PyCharm. Uh, terminal. Oh, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna blow that away. Make a new virtual environment because homebrew exploded everything. There we go. Pip install regex. Oh, okay. Python three. No SVA. We already did that. SVA.
install. Looks like installed. Regex. No module file name Regex. Don't we just install Regex? How do we load Regex? Pi 37 scratch pad. Whoops. Which Python? Python 3.9. Okay, so it's a different interpreter. has been a frustrating experience. Oh, it's pointing to the right place. It's just a different... It's not really 3.7. Wait, why is there no package on there? What's going on? Oh. I'm down like three directories. You just run that with nothing there. Okay, I ran it with nothing there. That's what happened. Uh, Python 3, 3, M, V, N, V, V, N, V. There we go. Let's try this again. Oh, my key's stuck. Ah! Everybody doing? Everybody cool? I've had some sticky keys recently. So to that, all right. So we're gonna close this. As a project. And open it back up and see what happens. Scratch button. New window. <sighs> see, Python 3.7. It's not, though. But whatever, if it works. Um, That looked like it worked. In your code lowercase, boom, boom, boom. Run that. RE is not defined. Reg X. Take that away. Okay, so anything that's not that, and it passed. No, anything that's not that. Wait, oh yeah, hang on. I'm confused. Substitute. All right, I gotta get a bite. I'll be right back. I'm hungry. I don't understand. I'm lost at the moment, but I think we're on the right track because it didn't. It still did the thing there. So, 
cool. Be right back. That's blurry. We should we should do the BRB thing. It is, uh, it is poor form to eat on stream, right? Wolf down a couple of pieces of pizza, or a piece of pizza, anyways. 
I'll drink it on stream. I'm maybe cripple, but. So why? So the, okay. So X. The grapheme matcher is supported. This is the only real thing on the regex page that talks about it, because these are all controls for new lines. And lowercase x doesn't work. Incomplete escape. Oh, because lowercase x is telling it, like, that's a slash to tell it. Slash x tells you there's more stuff coming. But uppercase x. Oh, now it, now it did everything. That's what I was expecting. And then everything that's not, I, wow, I hallucinated that. I, that was, I thought that went backwards the other way. Crap. Because I want the opposite of that. Code, not word, not word, whatever. N-A-I-V-E. As you uh, there's an E, but an E, when the language required the sex it, and faithfully drew. For a while, people wrote programs just didn't display accents. Is this the history of Unicode? I think this is the history of Unicode. I don't think it's gonna help me. Because that's because if you do not word right, anything that's not a word, so let's put a space in there just so we can see what ha is happening, right? So this should put a space, uh, put a dash there, right? But if we want to not x, that's doing everything. But if we match x. It's also doing everything. I s Wait. That shouldn't be possible. That's inverting. If we take the not away. But we take it out of the brackets. Am I doing something? Is it. Wait, is it prints? Oh, okay, wait, 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 hang on. Is it maybe parens that way? Because the other ones are for... Why did I get the L? Because it's a start. That's just capturing a group. We're characters. See, that does all the word characters. Because the dot and the space are still there. And if we put a that there, it inverts. But if we put that with an X, everything gets mushed. That's it. 
Wait. Hang on. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Is this just working? Yes, it's just working out of the box. Okay, good on you, Regex. That is fantastic. That's what we needed to see. Because that character right there is going into two, but if we go off Regex... It keeps us with the A. Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Hello. How's it going? mac Eist? mac Eist? Mac? Can I call you Mac? Make? make Eist? I'm bad with Twitch names. How's it going? I just figured out a reg X thing that I am super happy to see. Um, that I will need to post about at some point. Uh, post date. Reg X. Matching. Unicode. So, for example, uh, let's do this. A, A, B, B is our test. A, A, A space B, B. There we go. Oops. Oh, crap. Look at that. So that is our first string. And we'll start this. We'll do two here. Um, substring, so, sorry, give me one minute here to, we're just kind of messing around. I want to get, um, output equals that, print, output, and if we hide all this stuff for a second, like that, and then we run this. Right, cool. So that's not what we want, but that's what we get to start with. But then we do this one. Actually, we just copy and paste the whole thing, right? But we copy and paste, and we go with regex. And then this one keeps the accent mark. What's my OS? Uh, I'm on Mac OS like two ago. I forget which one it is. Uh, 1014 Mojave. Uh, so I think that I'm one, maybe and about to be two, uh, two behind the two behind the eight ball here. But so far, it's working for me. The machine's like five years old, though. Um, so it's it's starting to get get time to to jump up into a new one. Um, uh, That's cool. I can do this later. All right. That's that'll give me enough to do the post on, because uh, I'll write this up. This this took me this took me a little while to figure out. Um, the what are we gonna look at? So possible links. That one. This one. And then let's give credit here. And where else did we find? There's one more that helped. That's fine. Whoops. Hmm. All good. What else do you run? Um, lower, no, no. Yes, this is all fine, whatever. Ah, whatever, that'll be enough. I can look through them later. All right, back to it. Uh, okay, so now that we know how to do that, we'll flip this over 
All right, so I need to get back to my test here. So I'm gonna get this one out. If I run the suite, everything passes. Cool. If I bring this back in and run the suite, that one fails with all that noise. Which is fine because we can fix all this now, I think. So we're gonna bring these back. Oh, actually, hang on. Let's stay green here for a minute. Um, so we're going to switch in. So there's all the test cases running. Let's switch in to regex. Oh, actually, here, we can do that. Oh, sweet. We can do it this way. Um, so we're going to, instead of blue, we're going to go green. make all these go regex and see if that well actually first let's run it to make sure we're targeted right nope goofed still goofed what's going on exploded why did it explode Still exploding. What's going on? Oh, no module name regex. I should install regex. Let's try that first. Yep, install regex. There we go. Run. Test pass. Go to green. Test pass. Now we can add in regex. Regex, 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 regex. Run. There you go. Uh, so all this passed with regex. And so now we can actually test on blue with this one. So you're gonna go to blue. And there's our fail. Okay, cool. And so blue, we can copy back over from green. And now that that's doing regex, let's see what happens. Still gonna fail. Oh, this is perfect though, because it's keeping exactly what we want. That's it. So sweet. Now, how are we doing? We're a passing. Actually, let's see if we can use this. Maybe use this. Well, here, let's just do it. Pi, where's our scratch pad? that out so 
there's that. That's cool. I was I like that. Um was wondering about that. And now we don't have to wonder. So we can take that off of blue. And we can point this to blue. Run our test suite. Everything passed. And it's back to unit test for whatever reason. Okay, cool. Um, next test. Test 15. Exclamation point. So we're testing here. This may just work. It just worked. Cool. Next one. This is going to be test 16. Hmm, I don't think that's actually what I want. Yeah, maybe it is. Who cares? 16. You get to work? Yep. Worked. Keep the dots in there. Uh, like you could do the dot. You could, like I could flip the dots to underscores, but whatever. Like it's not that critical. And if they're in there to begin with, let's just leave them. Leave them sit. 17. Comma. Looks like it worked. Uh, it looks like it was working. 17's working. All right. I don't understand what's going on here. It just went away. Oh, it's here now. Oh, those just pointing out places that you could drop that. I guess that's what's going on. No idea why it's doing sometimes different things over there. But whatever. It's gonna be double quotes, I think. there run it one test failed all right something exploded oh yeah cool because we uh we've got the the characters coming in now nicely i dig it ah that's the end of the test suite we got them all all the things i could think of anyways Sweet. Finished. Finish. Testing file name conversions. Goodness. Cool. All right. Undefined at the module level. Okay, I I still don't know like what the right way to do this is, but th this is working, so that's cool. Um, so that does snake case names for. Yeah. Okay. So now we can just do the final cleanup, which is if that was blue, we just let blue be the thing. Run our test cases. Everything's passing. Drop that. that drop that run our test cases one last time pass and pass and pass and sweet so there's all name cleanup that's cool 
That regex is cool. Uh, oh, and we drop RE out here. We don't need it. One last time. Testing, testing, testing. There we go. Cool. Okay, so now... By and large, we're in pretty good shape. Um, because we're just going to feed the thing. File names. And to start with, the file name just need to be in the same path or in the same directory. But what we should do. Hmm. Where do we want to split this? Right, because what we're going to have is full. Potentially, you're going to have full paths. And this is where I'm unsure about where the test level is going to be. Or what the right test breakdown is going to be. Eyelash hanging out there. Because um, you're, cause you're going to have the, the capability of having... paths coming in like we want to make sure that the that this thing can handle that I mean you can do the first one without that but like that doesn't like no let's make sure it can do it um so how would you take because I think you would just split it Because you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to address, you wouldn't want to make any changes to. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. This, this may be fine. Hang on. This may be fine. Um, test file with dir path. So, like, I'm confident that all the other stuff is working for the names switching out. Now we just really need to do file test string. Do one more here with the directory path in it. So and we'll do two just uh, oh it'd just be fine. Um test dirt path with Dot in spaces. Because you can have an and in file names, right? I mean, some of these did. Yeah, if that so if, if that passes, then everything else is going to be fine. Um, and so we just want to do this. That's what we're targeting. Oh, you know what sucks? We prematurely got the other one, so we'll put that to dev. Okay, so this is going to fail. Because the path gets all munched, which is expected. So now we're going to point this at dev, which is also going to fail for a second um, until we put this in. So make it fail. It's failing, but now uh, new name equals all that jazz, all that jazz. Run, passing, because we're just hard coding it. So now we can go make it work, hopefully. So uh, what's the best way to do that? Because you could just do it on a split 
But there's also the directory name stuff, right? Their name, base name, right? Return the base name of the path name path. This is the second element of the pair returned by the path pair of returned by passing path to the function split. Note that the result of this function is different from Unix base name program where base name for the returns bar. Base name for the base name function returns an empty string. If there's a end of it. Okay. That's not super clear, but it should be fine. So we've got base name and then we've got dir path, right? Or dir name? Dir name. This is the first element of the pair returned by passing path to split. It's weird because like it has several different things. You would think it would be whatever. Um, dir path equals OS dir name of that. File name equals OS base name of that. So we need to import OS. Let's run and just see if it's still, nope, we exploded something. OS.path. There we go. And then what we can do, I think, is we do file name lower here. So this should still pass because we're still hard coding stuff. But if we pass this, I want to see what the errors comes out as, right? So it's just the endpoint thing, which is cool. New path equals dirt path slash new name. And then we pass a new name and we test new path. And we're passing. Sweet. Yeah, so we just split it out. We're leaving the path alone. And that was way easier than everything has gone recently. Um, yeah, so it's just making sure that we don't try and munge the directories any at all. We only affect the file name. That's cool, okay. Make sure not to affect the directory path, just the file name. Sweet, okay. Uh, and that was in dev. So let's just, oh, so yeah, what we should do is we're just gonna forward Actually, we're just going to see if it works. Do that. But then we've got to do this and this and this. And check that off dev. One test passed. How about all of them? Oh, exploded all over the place. Undo. Undo there. Undo there. Undo there. Undo there. Serves me right. Now we're green. Okay, so. Let's do it the safer way, which is to say return 
self that file path string equals file path string. Now let's see what happens. All right, so here's our explosions. Oh, okay. So we keep we're adding ah, good catch. We're adding a slash in front of all of them. So Let's see if we can do it with this. If durapath Just do it that way. There we go. So if there's a directory, then we add this st stuff in there. If there's not, then we don't. Um, yeah, I can't think of a cleaner way to do that. It's a little bit weird, but I like keeping. I want to make sure, like, I like the idea of like the a full path coming in and a full path coming out, not trying to like deal with anything else coming around in different places. Um, so that's forwarding straight over. So now if we do this to old, and take this back, and take this to here, and run them again, there's the passes. Sweet. Okay, so now we can take care of this one and delete it. Possibly that is the last time we will have to do that one. So then I'm just trying to think through the implementation, right? So the implementation, and so where, since this is dealing with a file system, I'm trying to figure out what a good way to do it is. Um, I guess I could start trying to mock the file system. I've never really done that before, I don't think. Mock a web service, yeah. A fake file system, third party, the other party is Google. Test docs plus practical example of the tutorial. So this is twenty fourteen. This is twenty thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Like it's funny because that kind of means there's probably Oh, this is a good point about all the permissions and all the other stuff. Yeah, let's just try the pie fake SF. Compatibility. Because it will not work with Python libraries that use C libraries to access the file system. Oh, okay, so it's got to be native through the Python thing because they can't patch the underlying C li libraries. Okay, I gotcha. Description will be called by talks. Try to see all the talks. Use run test locally, Docker container, interpreting, pi, whatever. Okay, cool.
because what I want is like to set up an integration test because it's so I, th I think because I'm dealing with the file system, I want to make sure that I'm doing it properly on the file system. And like I can kind of get my head around like you're going to be passing in a group of files like it's going to read a list and it's going to have an output list. But I really I want to make sure like I. And you're just gonna run the command on it, but I want to make sure that I'm running the command right, right? I want to I want to test the the full thing. So uh, we're gonna test the full thing. Compatibility. Uh, where's our examples? Does not seem to have an example. Docs. Anything in docs? Release documentation. Here we go. Features, limitations, test scenarios, custom faction, features. Limitations, history, next. From uh, import test case. Example test case, set up. Set up, hi, fix it. Uh, test create file, file path, self, assert false, OS path file exists, fs. Create file, file path, assert true. Okay. Automatically find a patch. And demonstrate in the files example pi and example test pi. Here we go. Patch using the PyTest plugin, okay. Still kind of freaks me out when you see someone that's like, ah, 2014. Though, last committed 2019, so, but it still, still freaks me out. Create file. Open write file test. Uh, delete file. Am I in the test one? No, example. Software under test. Create file. Why don't we find a patch file functions and modules? Create file. Fake file system unit test. Module under example is in. Doc test. Unit test class. Next comes the unit test class. This class is derived from fake uh, test case, which in turn is derived from unit test test case. Okay. So let's try this. First of all, did we commit that? Yeah, not yet. Um, what was this, directories? Oh, let's just clean up. Oh. Make sure file name is file names standalone when no dir is passed. There you go. All right, so let's try this. Tests. Test integration run dot pi. E remember, don't ask again. Yes, let's add it. Use bin environment Python three. Where's the other? Yeah, so this is, oh, we're gonna need to install that. Yep, install by fake FS. That seems incredibly fast for something that fakes a file system. 
class, integration, run, test, test case. If you call that in your setup, we'll automatically find all real life, all real file functions and modules and stub these out with fake ones. Do you substantial explain in more detail and automatically patch file function modules and demonstrate it in those? Fake file system module automatically finds all real file functions and modules and subs them out with those. Source code contains files demonstrating those. Okay, cool. Software under test. So we just want to do that, is what that amounts to, right? Copy, paste. Def test, file run. Now I got to figure out how I'm going to pass files into this. Cause like when you run it, it's going to run on the command line and you're just going to pass arguments to it. So main's going to be what runs and you're going to pass arguments to main and the main's going to pass them on here. And then initial files is going to be Test data file one dot text. Okay, and then we want to make that file exist. Okay, how about this? Initial file. Let's just do this one at a time. We don't need to do a glob. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do this one at a time. We don't need to glob it. That's fine because it's they're gonna go individually. File path. It's false. So we need OS. So I think this is unit test, right? This is what it says. That's probably gonna fail, right? Oh, oh, it went. is not true for it. Oh, wait, wait, so this doesn't, I'm mocking the file system, so it doesn't matter what path I put here, right? Slash nowhere. That failed. What if we do that? Okay, that's super slick. I like that a lot.
Yeah, so where I'm trying to figure out where the break point would be. other tests. Oh, you know what? Did I put in at this point? Pi structures. Basic unit test, basic setup for two files, make command line two tool. Video. Okay, so that's in order to run test, you install that. Okay, yeah, so let's move that up in the order a little bit. I just want to make sure that was there. Um, because this, we're going to do, oh, wait, 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 hang on, what just happened? Snake case names. Oh, yeah, here we go. From snake case names, import snake case names. So that is going to be this, with a space and that. And that's going to be. Oh, I guess you could actually do, instead of doing it global, you could do self. I wonder if that's a better way to do that. You, you got to keep doing self, though. I think I've tried that before. I like this better. So does that run? Still running, still passing. So snake case name. So we created the file. And then we're gonna do snake case names move file. Well, I guess we just wanna pass yeah, so we can just kinda like do a pass and say hello and go. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I, th I, th I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. So we want to test, we just want to test and see um, new file path equals SCN is going to get update name from file path. Assert it doesn't exert, this doesn't exist. So this should all still pass. Nope. Oh, right. File path string. Now it should pass. Passed. And then the test really is, so this becomes, this is the test. And like, I'm, I'm gonna trust that this, the rest of this stuff works um, cause it's code that is good, right? So, so if we got that, so we're gonna get them and then we're gonna move them. So we need SCN. Move file from equals file path to equals new file path. And that's gonna break because that doesn't really exist. Okay. 
still gonna break because the file doesn't exist. Whoops. Invalid syntax. It's from, not a good word. Yeah, okay, from is not a valid word. Kind of a bummer. Now it should pa not pass because the file doesn't exist, right? False is not true. That actually give us a message now. Check out the file. Um, okay, so we get rid of this. We can get rid of this. We can do this. Yeah, okay, that's good separation. Uh, pi, rename a file. Well, that's pretty easy. Oh, let's rename. Now, if we test, oh, failed. No such file or directory in the fake file system. Oh, I took out the create statement. Create it. Sorry, we definitely want that to happen. So weird because you can't see it, but it's happening, right? So if this is, oh, 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 actually what we should do, we should be more explicit. So let's, I want to see. Given we start with that, and expected equals expected file equals file one dot text. Yeah, because we're like, it's automatically going to be right <laughs> there. Expected file equals file one. We run it. Okay, so we can do this file path, source path, here we go. Initial path, expected path. Create that. To create it, we get the update name. 
then we move it. Wow, I'm having deja vu. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You do need, you, sorry, you do need to capture that because we, we do have to pull that in. Okay. Move it. Then we do that, okay. That's the test. Now we're, so, because I was testing the same thing that I was pushing down, so I was always gonna pass. Now it fails. File path is not defined. What? How about initial path? Initial path defined? Let's try that. Passed, okay, sweet. Like we kind of know this is should work, right? Um, well, it's funny because uh, yeah, this is gonna be on the command line, so I don't have to worry. The command line is gonna pass in the file paths, so I don't have to worry. about like doing glob and doing directory searches or any of that stuff. It's just, I just have to process the strings that are put in and we have to assume that the the files, that when we put it in from the file system or from the command line, we're putting them in properly. Um, and if you put in garbage, it won't, I guess, maybe I should check and see what happens if you put in junk that's not there. But then it would just, Like, that would just be this. And it would just bomb. I mean, obviously it wouldn't bomb with all the test stuff, but... I mean, it's good. it would just try, it would just, all this is gonna do is try and throw the rename at it, and if it can't rename it, it can't rename it. Yeah, that's basically the first version. So the, the next, the final thing to do is... <laughs> it's funny, unit test doesn't like that unit test isn't there, but it wants to be sucked in here somehow. Um, so the final thing to do is make sure there's no collisions on it. And how do we test for that? So... I don't know what a good test for that is. I'm also starting to fade a little bit, so let me bounce. Yeah, so. You need to, so it's gonna pass in. This is gonna take the args and you're gonna pass them in. And then from there, oh, so I wonder actually I was going to do here. Whoops. That was wrong. I think case Samson's not trying. Wait a minute. How did that go here then? How'd that work?
what is going on. Now it's not finding it. I don't think it bombed there earlier. I don't know what's going on. Um, well, how are those other ones getting it there if it's not? Oh, do I not have in the setup? Ah, I'm not installing it yet. Okay, 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 okay. That makes sense. It still kind of freaks me out with the whole like install for the thing or whatever. Um, actually, I guess. So if you do, let me just re-verify this, right? So we did Python install. How do we install this? Python install editable. In order to run a test, you have to do it locally. Set up with you and run that. In the main project directory with that in it. Note that if you have a CLI console scripts entry point, it will install in the virtual environment as well. No need to worry about doing system. Okay. So let's just test that. Snake case names. Snake case names dot main main. And here pip or python pip install editable saw some red set up pi not found whoop my different oh, my wrong directory Ink stall. See, I uh, this I don't understand. Copy. And if we paste it again. Now it says it doesn't find it. Also, I'm nervous because it should have installed it right there. Oh, unless I didn't actually uncomment that. But why didn't it yell the first time? Definitely saw some red. Set up utility not found. Oh, it bounced me down. Ah, what's going on? Oh! I understand what happened. So when I did snake case names, if you watch the directory that I'm currently in, which is dev with one snake case names, and I hit it again, now I'm in dev snake case names, snake case names. That's. This is what was going on. Now it's doing stuff. Now. Should have installed it this time. Why didn't it install this time? Now I'm confused. Uh... 
is there. I don't want it to go in the directory, though. So I'm, okay, so it's okay. So it's installed. It's weird. It just won't let you do it if it's saying the same thing as directory. I guess it hits the directory first. That's kind of weird. I wonder if the directory should be named. Snake case names. Probably not. I'm just not sure what to call it. Tools, classes. Code. Trove. Environment. Things. Probably not environment. Environment's probably bad. Okay, but that's there. Alright, so... Eh, I don't know. It's probably good for, for tonight. Um... Yeah, because what... Yeah, and this will be the thing to test. Is... If I can pass... I, so I think I can pass, like, star.mp3 to it. Or mpw. Just like mp3s. It's a wayer. Oh yeah, no match is found. Okay, right, right. Um, I don't know, it feels like it's pretty close. Kind of a long time coming for it. That's all cool. Uh, we're going to use this, though, for an example. Let's put that in real quick. Pi mock file system. All that. I'll do a better example right now or later, but the uh, that could just started. Um, I'm really, I'm. One of the next things I'm going to do is start getting all this stuff, my notes going out. That's going to be a neat, just like, thing. Uh, but that's for another day. Some other time. So, for now, have a good evening. See y'all. Take care. We'll do it again soon. Probably tomorrow. Later. Bye.